Last season in week one, offense ruled the roost as the Titans knocked heads with the Knights team that was bent on showing everyone it was a state playoff caliber team. Young Triway superstar quarterback Parker Carmichael threw for nearly a quarter of a mile worth of yards. West Holmes' vaunted running attack pounded out nearly 500 yards worth of real estate. With a ton of offense taking place in this back and forth backyard rivalry where there was little love lost between the two sides, it turned out to be a defensive gem by Brady Arnold that turned the momentum the Knights way in a 41-22 West Holmes victory. With Triway leading 15-13 nearing the end of the third quarter, the Titans were poised to go in for another score when Arnold slipped in front of a Triway receiver picking the ball off at the two-yard line. One 98-yard drive later, West Holmes had recaptured the lead and then proceeded to force three late Triway turnovers going on to post a 41-22 win that was far closer than the final score would indicate. Triway would go on to post a 7-3 record, their only other two losses coming in nail biters. Carmichael returns this year with the idea of putting up even bigger numbers at the top of his to-do list, willing to do whatever he has to do to knock the Knights off in the 2013 season opener. It wasn't just another loss last season for the Black Bears of Warsaw, who traveled to West Holmes in Week 2 with hopes of giving the Knights a game. It was a complete humiliation. West Holmes ran roughshod over, around, and through the overmatched Black Bears to a tune of a 55-12 victory, a game in which West Holmes seemingly could have named their score. If head coach Kevin Maltrich wanted to create a highlight film in the Knights' first effort out in front of the home crowd, he did a good job. Whether it was Gabe Snyder hitting wideout Brady Arnold on stride with a picture-perfect pass, Lane Perrone, Grant Hay, or Garrett Mackey sliding off tackle for huge chunks of yardage, or the defense standing up to the Bears at the line of scrimmage. This blowout served as the perfect precursor to what would become a magical season for West Holmes. The Black Bears would go on to post a 5-5 record last season, turning things around, including a convincing 29-7 victory over Kishakton in the Week 10 finale. It won't be a stretch to think the Black Bears will be out to avenge the Knights on their home turf in week two this season. Welcome to West Holmes football, Woody Hayes style. This week three clash of bitter rivals proved to be a showcase for everything that was good for the West Holmes Knights in a 41-7 blowout. A veteran Knight squad faced a young Redskins team and amassed 400 rushing yards on offense while sacking Coshocton quarterback Brock Bolden six times with a relentless pass rush led by ends Brock McCauley and Gabe Snyder. While these two teams have assembled some of the most exciting football games imaginable over the years, this was not one of them. It also gave Knights faithful a glimpse of what soon would become a record-setting season for powerful running back Lane Perrone. The Redskins would go on to build a 2-8 and eight record last season, suffering some bumps and bruises along the way. Now a year older and wiser and still stinging from the pain of last year's beatdown, the Coshocton Redskins hope to come into Knights Stadium and impose a little will of their own this year. The Madison Rams had huge problems putting together a sustained drive in last year's early season contest with West Holmes, never mounting a sustained scoring drive. On the other hand, they didn't have to, reeling off two huge scoring plays of 70 yards from scrimmage and returning a pair of kicks for scores to make this West Holmes' most thrilling game of the year. With neither team able to generate much offense at all late in the contest, it came down to the kickers in this double overtime thriller, and West Holmes sophomore Logan Gallion delivered, connecting on a 33-yard kick to forge a 31-28 lead. With Lucas Geib and Brock McCauley providing serious pressure on quarterbacks as Madison went for the kill, the Rams instead went backward and were forced to attempt a 42-yard field goal, which fell short of the mark, setting off a jubilant night celebration. West Holmes had claimed a scintillating double overtime victory by a foot, the foot of kicker Logan Gallion. That would be Madison's lone loss of the regular season as they rolled into the playoffs and top Westlake 14-7 before bowing out to eventual state champion Toledo Central Catholic 45-7. Getting a chance to face the Knights this year in Mansfield, the Rams will look to kick it in gear and grab a cold, hard slab of revenge this time around.
Ali and Frazier had nothing on the Knights and Arrows based on last year's thrilling 41-36 Knights win in Ashland. Like two heavyweights going at it, the two teams beat each other senseless with their offenses, both taking and giving all night long. The Arrows with a glorious aerial attack and the Knights grinding it out as usual on the turf of Ashland Community Stadium. The Arrows threw a heavy combination of punches early, scoring first, but West Holmes answered the bell big time, scoring three straight eight times for a 21 to 7 lead. Like a classic champion, Ashland stormed back to take a 24-21 lead and the two teams stood at the center ring and slugged it out the rest of the way. Garrett Mackey scored the Knights final TD to give West Holmes a 41-30 lead, but the West Holmes Knights had to hang on for dear life after allowing an Arrows TD and then failing to score. But it would be another Knights win with Mitch Shealy making an interception past midfield to finally secure the TKO. The Arrows had high hopes of grabbing a playoff spot in 2012, but they fell to 6-4 and four in Week 9 with a loss to Mansfield-Madison, which killed any playoff hopes they had. Now, a hungry Arrows team will be looking to square things up against the Knights in this year's Week 5 contest. From the opening kick to the final horn in this contest at Red Riders Stadium, the Knights had their way with the Orville Red Riders in a 41-0 blowout. It saw West Holmes do whatever it set its mind to. Over the years, these two backyard rivals have had some tantalizingly close encounters, but this week's sixth blowout was all about the Knights flexing their muscle and proving to everyone that they were indeed a definite Division III playoff contender. Even as the Knights' running game pounded away, ripping off huge chunks of yards on a regular basis, the unheralded offense continued to rise to stardom, presenting Coach Maltrich with a shutout. Orville's proud program would suffer through a tough season in 2012, going 1-9, and nine, winning their opener against Northwest, then dropping their final nine contests in a year to forget. The Red Riders will be out to turn the tide at Knight Stadium this year in hopes of erasing the ugly memories of 2012's games gone awry. Will Doug DeVault's squad erase those nightmares, or will West Holmes once again impose its every desire over the Red Riders when these two Ohio Cardinal Conference rivals tee it up on week six. It's every football team's dream, a perfect 10-0 campaign when the regular season winds down and the second season begins. Last year in Week 7, the Mansfield Senior Tigers leapt into Knights Stadium, gave a mighty roar, and destroyed the hopes of Knights' perfection. With a 40-29 defeat, Senior handed the Knights their lone regular season loss of 2012 after West Holmes had produced six straight wins to open the season. It didn't take long for Senior to showcase their their immense talent at the skill positions. On the first play from scrimmage, senior quarterback Jalen Reese pitched to check Washington, who drew the Knights' defense in on an apparent sweep and then pulled up and proceeded to uncork a 64-yard scoring strike to Keon Johnson for a scoring strike that stunned the Knights and their faithful fans. That play set the stage for a Tigers offensive explosion and the Knights unable to stop the athletic Tiger attack. Senior roared into Week 10 on a huge high, having wrapped up a spot in the playoffs. However, a key 34-0 loss to rival Madison sent them reeling into the next season, where they quickly were bounced in the playoffs 28-16 by Tiffin Columbian. West Holmes looks to avenge last season's lone loss as they travel to Mansfield, where many teams have tried, but few have succeeded in escaping town with W. Ladies and gentlemen, prepare to be mystified, bamboozled, and mesmerized as we present to you the amazing Maltrich the Magician. In front of a hostile Lexington crowd, West Holmes head coach Kevin Maltrich got out his bag of tricks, pulled out all the stops early in the game, and the result was trickery at its best. With no score in the game in the first half, on fourth and six from their own 24, punter Brock McCauley faked a punt, rambled 24 yards for a surprise first down, and before you could say hocus pocus, Lane Perone plunged into the end zone for the lead score. Maltrich's David Copperfield mode continued in the second half when Logan Gallion's bewildering second half hooch kickoff landed in no man's land. As the Minutemen looked on stunned, the Knights recovered. The Minutemen never did. West Holmes went on to record a 21-7 win in what seemed to be a defensive gem by both teams. The loss sent the Minutemen into a free fall going from playoff contender at 5-2 to a 500 team by year's end. Lexington dropped its final three games, losing to the Knights as well as Mansfield Sr. and Ashland. With the Minutemen out to pull off some magic of their own this year at Knight Stadium in the gate, Maltrich the Magician will hope to continue to befuddle the Minutemen, this time at home. 
West Holmes and Worcester were greeted by a cold and windy autumn air during week nine last season. And when the rains came down, it made for treacherous playing field at West Holmes Stadium. The contrasting styles of each team's offensive attack proved to be detrimental to the generals. While the Knights ground out huge chunks of yards on the ground, Worcester's spread offense throwing attack was brutally impacted. After two early miscues, the Knights offense exploded behind Lane Perrone's record-setting performance. Perrone crushed through the Generals' line for 235 yards, three touchdowns, and set the school record for points in a season with 144. Meanwhile, West Holmes' swarming defense made life miserable for a Generals team that will be bent on showing the area they aren't the same team that got destroyed last year. While the end of the year on a high High note by pummeling backyard rival Orville 34-7, Worcester entered the 2012 season 3-7 and, and hoped to reverse those numbers this year. Their sights set on turning the tide against West Holmes in Week 9. In a Week 10 matchup that featured a heavily favored Knights team, which was already playoff bound, the Colts sent a chill through the West Holmes faithful by scoring early on a 51-yard scoring strike. If the sleeping giant needed to be awoken, that may have been done. The mighty Knights rolled from there, ignited by Grant Hayes' scintillating 83-yard scamper to pay dirt after being sprung on a picture-perfect block from Mitch Sheely. With the vaunted ground game gobbling up the yards, the defense took over for the Knights. With OCC Defensive Player of the Year Gabe Snow Snyder leading a ferocious attack, allowing just a meaningless late touchdown late in the game. Always a strong contender in the Ohio Cardinal Conference, Clearfork limped along to a 3-7 finish in the OCC, beating only Orville on its way to a 1-6 mark in conference play. Will the Knights be able to tame the Colts again this year, or will Clearfork exact its revenge in this season's grand finale, which could hold playoff implications for the Knights?